गुड इवनिंग स्टूडेंट्स सो टुडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट वर्नियर कैलिपर्स इट्स एन इंस्ट्रूमेंट विच इज़ यूज टू मेजर लेंथ ओके एंड आई विल बी टेलिंग यू द रीज़न वाई वी यूज वर्नियर कैलिपर्स बिकॉज जस्ट नाउ आई सेट दैट अ वर्नियर कैलिपर्स इज यूज टू मेजर लेंथ ओके सो द सेम पर्पज इज सर्वड बाई अ नॉर्मल स्केल ऑल्सो ओके सो इन वॉट वे इज अ नॉर्मल स्केल दैट वी यूज इट इज दिस स्केल दैट आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट सो इफ यू वॉन्ट टू हैव अ लुक यू कैन हैव अ लुक दिस इज द नॉर्मल स्केल दैट यू यूज इट इज मार्क्ड इन सेंटीमीटर्स ओवे हियर ओके एंड इन इन द फॉर्म ऑफ इंच ऑन दिस साइड ओके सो दिस इज वन इंस्ट्रूमेंट यू कैन से और वन डिवाइस विच कैन मेजर लेंथ ओके सिमिलरली यू हैव वर्नियर कैलिपर सो दिस इज हाउ अ वर्नियर कैलिपर लुक्स लाइक ओके सो आई विल शो यू ऑल द डिटेल्स एंड द डिफरेंट पार्ट्स ऑफ दिस इंस्ट्रूमेंट एंड वॉट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन यूजिंग दिस इंस्ट्रूमेंट एंड द नॉर्मल स्केल दैट वी हैव ओके so our motive today is as you can read here vernier calipers and how to use it to find the length okay so let us begin our lecture now the first thing about vernier calipers i'll show you this diagram first this is a diagram of a, a detailed description of a vernier caliper so there are different parts that you see over here and uh, i'll take uh, help of this particular uh, diagram to help you understand Uh, what are the different parts uh, in uh, uh, a vernier caliper a real vernier caliper it looks like this which is exactly the same as this uh, apart from the different coloration that they have used okay so i'll explain uh, all these different parts in the actual uh, device okay so let us first have a uh, clear look at the diagram so uh, the first thing that you see here is the main scale okay so you see this main scale is this white colored scale which is there in the background okay so it is starts from zero the reading start from zero here and then all these small uh, markings they are 1 mm each okay so it is just like a normal scale normal scale means the scale that you have in your geometry boxes okay so that is exactly the reason why this uh, the name of this scale is the main scale okay because remember children uh, this vernier calipers that we use it actually comprises of two different scales one is the main scale which is uh, mm, uh, you know exactly similar to your uh, normal scale that you use and there is a vernier scale also as you can see here this portion of the scale which has been darkened in the gray color this scale is actually able to slide on the main scale in this uh, uh, actual Uh, device so i'll show you how it uh, is able to slide also but right now we are having a look at the second scale that we have which is the vernier scale and it can slide on the top of the main scale with the help of a mover over here okay so i'll show you that mover also so the first thing that we have understood is that vernier caliper has two scales one is the main scale which is marked in mm okay and then the second one is the vernier scale and you can see that it has small divisions over here okay there are 10 divisions shown over here and in our actual experiment in our actual device also i'll show you uh, how uh, they are uh, marked okay so these are the two things and then you can see the jaws okay so the on the lower end you can see two jaws marked by j1 and j2 so these are known as the outside jaws i'll tell you the reason also why they are called as outside jaws and then similarly at the top you can see that the uh, uh, that the construction of these jaws these jaws and these jaws if you look at the internal portion they are straight like this okay whereas here they are actually curved okay so i'll tell you the reason why they are curved also so these are the jaws and naturally you have a screw also which tightens the movement of the vernier scale on the main scale if you want to loosen the movement if it is too tight to move along so then you loosen the screw and then you can do that okay and then obviously there is a uh, tail part or the strip part which you have to understand okay now let us come back to our actual device now this is how the actual device looks like okay so now let me first show you where is the main scale so this is your main scale okay this is your main scale and i'll show you the comparison also if you are uh, you know if you want to have a look here children 
let's just have a look let me zoom it uh, a little closer now you have a look here so I'll put four exactly on four you can see over here uh, let me just show you with the help of a uh, pen here so that you can get it easily okay so here you can see this is the uh, marking four on our main scale and this is marking four on the normal scale okay and you can see that each individual divisions over here they are exactly same so that the fifth marking or the marking for the five centimeter also matches with the five centimeter mark on the normal scale so this way you can easily see that uh, uh, you know this the reason why we call this this particular scale to be the main scale is because it is actually similar exactly similar to the normal scale that we use so now let us come to our normal scale now what is the minimum uh, uh, you know measurement that you can do with a normal scale so this is our normal scale okay now you can see here that this is zero centimeter and this is one centimeter and in that inside that so uh, now this may be a, a little confusing you will have a look here so from five to six this is five centimeter and this is six centimeter so in between you have total 10 markings okay so naturally in one centimeter if there are 10 divisions then each division will make one millimeter each okay so if somebody wants to ask you if somebody asks you what is the lowest measurement that you can do with the help of this particular normal scale you will say one millimeter you cannot measure 0 0.5 millimeter with the help of this normal scale because you can see the minimum marking is one millimeter so after one millimeter comes two millimeters there is no 0 0.5 millimeter here okay naturally we are going to skip this part because this is they have shown further bifurcations here which is not usually present in the normal scale okay so this this part is how the normal scale looks like and naturally this side is the inch side okay so now let's have a look at uh, our instrument here so we all have understood that this is our main scale that we have okay now this scale which is there is the vernier scale and you can see that there this is the mover that we have so with the help of your thumb here you can actually move the vernier scale on top of the main scale you can see the movement here so it can be moved this way and it can be moved this way as well okay now if you feel that it is too tight to move then this is the screw that you can uh, you know uh, release it a bit and then it the movement will become rather easy for you to do okay and if you feel that this movement is uh, you know uh, too free flowing then you can tighten this uh, screw also which will give you a much difficult movement or the tighter movement let's say okay so it can be adjusted according to the need of the person now let's come back to the two jaws okay so let me just go back here okay so now let me separate the jaws naturally these are the two outside the jaws that the book was talking about okay why are they called the outside jaws is i'll show you something so suppose that i have this small uh, uh, you know uh, tire of a toy vehicle okay and i want to measure the external diameter or the outside diameter of this particular uh, uh, um, tire piece okay so naturally the outside diameter now let me just keep this and show you the outside diameter will stretch from right from here up to here okay that is exactly the reason why this is being called outside uh, diameter and that is why these jaws are known as the outside jaws okay so they are measuring from here right up to here they are measuring the outside diameter whereas if you turn this around you will see you will see that there is a hollow portion over here this portion this portion is hollow so if you want to measure the internal diameter right from this end up to this end so naturally the thickness of the tire will not be taken this time so the jaws have to be stuck here and here okay and that is why these two jaws are known as the inside jaws let me show you this also with the help of uh, this uh, actual putting it in between these two jaws so now you see children that this is this is the way you will put the 
uh, whatever you have to measure it in this case this is a tire diameter you can have a bob also you can have a pencil diameter also so where are the two jaws located the two jaws are uh, you see you can see that the readings are starting from here right up to the outside end here okay so if you want to measure the internal diameter of this tire with the help of these jaws it will not be possible because these jaws can actually only hold the uh, tire from outside okay so they will measure the outside diameter and that is why these jaws are known as the outside jaws now let's come to this end why are they called the inside jaws is you see you see they uh, i am just bringing them uh, these two jaws i am bringing them closer so that i can put the tire on top like this from inside and then i will extend these two jaws so that they actually you know get attached to the inner inner portion of the tire so do you think uh, what uh, what do you think will uh, be the reading when when i attach these inside jaws like this in the internal ends of the tire will they give us the external diameter no they will give us the internal diameter and naturally that will be different from the outside diameter or the outer diameter because every tire will have some thickness you can see that uh, there is a little bit of a thickness over here which will not be counted in the internal jaws okay so you can take the example of this small uh, toy cup also so if you want to measure uh, let's say the diameter from here to here if you want to measure the outside diameter so this uh, will be the idea this is how you will hold it but naturally you can see that, that this cup has a little thickness also at both ends all around because naturally it is made up of some kind of a material so you will have some material thickness here some material thickness here so if you want to measure the internal under wala diameter okay this is this is measuring the outside diameter and that is the reason why these are known as outside jaws so now let me take it out and let me use the internal jaws these are the internal jaws so let me just bring them closer and insert it inside the cup and now i will tighten them up without actually disturbing the shape of the cup so now you can see that these two jaws internal jaws are stuck in the internal uh, you know uh, the circumference of the uh, cup top so they will measure the inside diameter like this okay so this is exactly the difference between these two jaws and that is the reason why they are called as external and internal jaws now let's come to that last portion which is this strip portion so you can see that uh, we have this particular mover so you can move while you are moving the vernier scale you can see the vernier scale is sliding on the main scale so while it is doing that you can see that there is a thin strip portion which is also coming out so you can see see this is coming out okay so now what is this going to be used for naturally this vernier caliper the main purpose is to measure length but you can certainly measure the depth of this cup also or the depth of a uh, you know a measuring cylinder or something uh, like that okay so this this strip is actually going to test the depth of that particular uh, instrument uh, or the cylinder whatever you want to measure okay so there are three things three ways in which you can measure length using this vernier caliper so this is the description of the parts now let us come to uh, uh, you know uh, okay let's let's have a look at the divisions of the vernier scale now i'll bring this a little closer children and i'll uh, show you with the help of this uh, pen over here these are the divisions you can see one two three four five and uh, you know if you count these are total 10 divisions that you have okay these are the first five divisions and then these are the remaining five divisions so overall there are total 10 divisions on the vernier scale now what is the essence or what is the significance of these 10 uh, uh, you know uh, the 10 divisions on the vernier scale so let me uh, show you when i saw the normal scale i can write the least count least count of a normal scale so least count of a normal scale i will write as 1 mm or 
if you want to write it in centimeters it will be 0 0.1 centimeters okay so from your normal scale you can only measure a least value that is why the name is least count least count means the smaller measurement that you can do with a with a device accurately and precisely so one millimeter is the lowest value and 0 0.1 centimeter is the uh, lowest value in terms of uh, centimeter units okay now what if somebody wants to measure something below one millimeter so naturally you need more precise instrument which in fact is vernier caliper so now i will show you what is the least count of a vernier calipers and by the way this uh, has another name also this is also known as a slide calipers okay this is also known as the slide calipers okay so now let's see least count of a vernier caliper is given by the formula value of one main scale division m dot s dot d means main scale division now where is my main scale division so this is my main scale or let me show you that in the instrument itself so uh, let's say for example if i have this as my main scale please have a look children this is my main scale okay so what is the least value or what is the value of one small division on the main scale so naturally that is one millimeter because this is scale is the normal scale okay so this each of the small divisions they are measuring one millimeter each so what is the value of one msd it is one mm okay now but this is not the entire formula the formula is value of one msd divided by divided by total number of vernier divisions okay so the formula of the least count of a vernier caliper what is least count of a vernier caliper the smallest value that it can measure so why do we want the least count of a vernier caliper because we want to check that the vernier caliper is better than the normal scale okay so what is the value of one main scale division it is one mm you can see one mm upon total number of vernier divisions so how many vernier divisions are there 10 vernier divisions are there just now i showed you uh, you can have a relook again you can see that So you can see uh, it is these 10 divisions let me just uh, make it a little more uh, clear in terms of uh, how you are able to view it uh, let's uh, let me zoom it a bit okay so yes these are the 10 divisions that i'm talking about okay so these are the 10 divisions. you can have more divisions also here if you have more than 10 divisions here then naturally the least count in the formula when you have a look uh, let's have a look at the formula this is my formula so 1 mm will remain at the top divided by total number of vernier divisions. so here total number of vernier divisions are 10 if they are 20 then naturally 1 upon 20 will give you an even lesser value so that will be an even smaller least count so that vernier caliper will be even more precise okay so that is what the understanding of a least count here is so 1 upon 10 that is naturally going to give you 0 0.1 mm okay or if you want to write it in centimeter naturally it will become 0 0.01 centimeter okay now you have a look compare this least count and compare this least count this is of a normal scale and this least count is of a vernier caliper now have a look here what is the difference if you talk in terms of mm the normal scale can measure only a smallest value of 1 mm but you can see it can, this vernier caliper can measure a minimum value of 0 0.1 mm which is one tenth part of, a, uh, of an mm or even if you want to talk in terms of centimeter let's compare 0 0.1 centimeter for a normal scale and 0 0.01 centimeter for a 
slide caliper or a vernier caliper so this is more precise this can measure even smaller things to a greater accuracy similarly the third thing in the next lecture when i will make uh, uh, a video on uh, uh, on a screw gauge i will show you that this least count can go even smaller so 0 0.001 also it can become in terms of centimeters okay so as long as you have 10 divisions you have this least count there are many vernier calipers available in the market where you can have uh, more than 10 divisions on the vernier scale which will give you an even more precise and smaller least count now we have talked about least count enough let us talk about the usage because remember this lecture is dedicated to the usage of a vernier scale so what is it used for it is used for measuring length and i will show you uh, with the help of this cup, I'll show you how to measure the external diameter of uh, this cup from the top area. So, first of all, let us uh, talk about how do we actually check whether this instrument is, uh, uh, you know, uh, devoid of any errors or not. So, in vernier caliper, there is a, an error. Uh, it's a mechanical error. It's a fault of the uh, manufacturing defect, you can say. It which sometimes comes. Uh, most of the times it is not there. So, uh, I'll tell you about that zero error. It is called as the zero error. So, uh, what is that zero error? So, uh, naturally, if this is the situation of the two scales, okay, you have this as the vernier scale here and this is the normal scale stretching uh, uh, beyond till here. So, if you bring the two jaws together, now let me uh, uh, show you, okay, let me first show you where is the zero of the main scale. You can see that this is the zero mark of the main scale and this over here, if you can see it here, this is the this marking small marking here is the zero of the vernier no zero is written over here because that area is very small the space is very less so the first division is always known as the zero mark of the vernier scale okay now let me bring these two jaws together okay naturally this is the movable jaw because this is attached to the moving uh, vernier uh, scale this jaw is known uh, these two jaws are known as the immovable jaws because they can't move Okay, so when I bring these two jaws together completely like this, I will see that whether the zero on the main scale, you can see that there is a zero of the main scale still uh, visible because this is the hollow out portion. So zero of the main scale and zero of the vernier scale, you can see that they are exactly in line. Okay, they are exactly in line. They should be exactly in a line if your uh, vernier caliper is to be free of any defect okay but naturally you can get a situation like this also now see assume that uh, now this is a correct instrument this does not have any error so uh, i can't really show you how a zero error uh, appears in this but i will just assume by shifting this position suppose that on moving the two jaws completely now assume isko uh, just forget that there's no uh, forget that there's a gap here so uh, now we are assuming that i have brought the two jaws completely uh, uh, together now you can see that the zero of the main scale and the zero of the vernier let me bring it even more close okay now you can see it more clearly uh, let me show you with the help of a uh, pen here so this is the zero you can see very clear zero of the main scale and this is the zero of the vernier are they in line certainly not in line so the zero of the vernier is to the right of the zero of the main scale so when the zero of the vernier is to the right side after bringing the two jaws together if the zero of the vernier is to the right side of the zero of the main scale then this error is known as the positive zero error similarly there are sometimes it is possible that when you bring two jaws together this vernier zero moves to the left side of the main scale zero so in that case it becomes a negative zero error so this is the only error that you can have in this uh, instrument now let us come back to the actual process of measurement now this does not have any zero error so you will not have to worry about any zero error now let me first write the formula how you measure so let's say for example we have to measure the diameter of the cup okay external diameter naturally so this will be equal to m s d which is the main scale division plus n into 
least count now least count we have already understood least count it is 0.01 centimeter for a vernier caliper that i am carrying so what is this n going to be so this n is going to be the number of division on the vernier scale which coincides with that of the main scale after the insertion of the cup between the jaws okay so let me first write this n means number of division on the vernier scale which is coinciding coinciding means in the same vertical line coinciding with the main scale okay and this naturally is your main scale division now i'll show you how to record these three things naturally this is already understood this has a formula so it is a value of one main scale division upon total number of vernier scale divisions so this value is already ready with us okay so this is that value we will keep uh, this in mind now i will show you how you actually insert the cup so you bring the two jaws away from each other put this cup like this now children have a look here what how are how am i going to get this msd because this is the first thing that i have to see now msd means main scale division so from where should you get this uh, reading naturally you should get this reading from your main scale which is this scale okay because its full form is main scale division so you get main scale division from your main scale not from your vernier scale so what is that reading going to be now that reading is going to be the reading on the main scale which is just before the zero of the vernier so now you see children where let me just zoom it a bit uh, like this okay now have a look here this is my zero of the vernier because this is my first marking on the vernier okay so what is my msd going to be my msd is going to be the reading on the main scale which is just before the zero of the vernier so uh, let me use a pen here let's say for example if uh, this is this is the zero of the vernier so what is the reading on the main scale which is just before before means this side okay this is the zero of the vernier once again children this is the first reading on the vernier scale so this is the zero of the vernier scale so just before this what is the reading on the main scale you can see it is this particular mark which is there and it corresponds to 4.5 how do i know that this is 4.5 because the very next reading is 5 and the next reading becomes 5.5 similarly this becomes 6 so naturally when we go to the left side just before 5 i will have this big mark as 4.5 now let me just show you this uh, by taking this out also i have taken out the cup and i'll 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 show you what this reading is this reading i'm talking about this reading okay so let me just remove this and i'll show you now you can see it was this this mark that i was referring to so naturally this is 4 this is midway from 4 to 5 so that is 4.5 okay so now i'll put the cup back again so you can uh, have the cup put back again and you will uh, let me just uh, tighten this up uh, back again so you can see the reading yeah now it is tight so remember children this uh, whatever you are measuring this has to be tight enough uh, the jaws have to be tight enough to hold that without deforming uh, uh, the shape okay so just before the zero of the vernier this mark 4.5 cm becomes my msd okay so let me just zoom it back again i will now write the msd value so this msd value i am now going to write my msd value is 4.5 cm okay plus okay now comes the n portion so now let me explain this 
n portion now what is this n portion number of division on vernier scale coinciding with the main scale so let me show you this also uh, like this so now you see children let me zoom this back a bit yes now you see yeah now which division on the vernier scale uh, which means this scale these are all small divisions that are there now all of them are not exactly in line with each of these uh, main scale divisions okay so uh, uh, let me just have a look here how much uh, which division is exactly coinciding so you can see that this division first division is naturally not coinciding uh, this is slightly to the right side uh, then uh, this is the first division second i think third one is exactly in line see see children this is what i'm talking about so what is the definition of n n means which division on vernier so where is vernier this is the vernier divisions all these 10 divisions are vernier divisions so you have to look for uh, the division which is exactly in line line means vertical line so let us count we will not count this zero wala mark we will count from one two three so this third mark is directly in line so my n value becomes three okay so now let me come back here i will write n value as three multiplied by naturally my least count was already calculated 0 0.01 centimeter so this is going to give me 4.5 centimeter plus 3 into this will give you give you 0 0.03 centimeter which will after addition give me 4.53 centimeters this is now you can see that this reading normally uh, naturally children this reading is of the diameter external diameter of this small toy cup and it is coming up to two places of decimal can you do the same thing with the help of a normal scale now let me pick up the normal scale this is my normal scale you can always put this right here at the top and get a value of uh, let's say okay let me show you the difference here so i zoom this back in and i want to measure the external diameter so you can see that uh, it comes out to be somewhere around uh, let's say yeah so it comes out to be somewhere around you see 4.5 is over here and you know a number of divisions are actually overlapping on the body of uh, the circumference of this cup okay so that actually makes it difficult for you to come to an exact and precise value of the diameter of this cup using this scale you can guess a rough value you can say that it is somewhere around 4.5 or 4.6 but you can't really get an exact value up to second place of decimal why because this is a normal scale and it can only measure one millimeter as the lowest amount whereas you can naturally see here in case of a vernier caliper we have actually gone to the second place of decimal to be more accurate okay so this is actually the difference between uh, these two things which are used uh, primarily for the same purpose for the measurement of the lens so i am sure that you must have got a fair bit of an idea of how to insert how to uh, you know find out msd how to find out this n and least count okay thank you children please go through this lecture uh, without fast forwarding it so that you get all the details this is uh, as good as i could have uh, probably made it thank you